white flag that off and they racing again march 6th handicap chase three miles 17 fences just like the race gone before us short run down to the first and it is get a day moscow so what followed by dubai devils the trigger just in behind them manila for dollars as they head on towards the second fence get a day the leader followed by moscow so what dubai devils and the trigger followed by manila for dollars and then comes Envol Piergi. Young Devs rider Hugh Morgan is without the help of his Ardens as they jump the next fence in the back straight. Number three, Young Dev is continuing to head back towards the rear of the field as Gedaday takes them onto the fourth from Moscow. So what? The trigger, Dubai Devils, Manila for dollars, Envol Piergi. These are being followed by last year's winner, Shane Berleuk, as they reach the fourth, the fence at the end of the back straight. Dubai Devils jumped up on terms with Get A Day and Moscow, so what? Being followed by the trigger on Vol Piergi, white cap in between Shane Berleuk and Manila for dollars, and then Arctic Skipper, Samurai Cracker on the inside of Fog and Ballock and young dev now the back marker hugh morgan in some difficulty across they come to the fifth the first ditch dubai devils moscow so what get a day the trigger being followed across to the straight first time by Envol piergi then shane malayak and manila for dollars as they make this bend taking them into the straight to fences six through to eight moscow so what Cotton Roar, the black and white colors just in front from Get A Day, Dad O'Keefe on the near side is Dubai Devils and Paddy O'Hanlon as they come now to meet the first fence in the straight. Moscow, so what? Get A Day on the right, on the stand side is Dubai Devils. Not much between these three, followed downwards by Envol Piergi, Shea Malayok. Then comes the trigger, Manila for dollars, an Arctic skipper, Samurai Cracker. Young Dev relegates Fog and Ballock to be the back marker. Almost at the center fence in the home line, and it's Dubai Devils over in front of Moscow, so what, and get a day the far side, being followed to the nearest fence in front of the stands by the trigger, and then on Vol Pierge in Shame Malayok. Dubai Devils, get a day, and Moscow, so what, these three disputing the lead. Jumping the fence, that'll be the last one next time. And the three mile racing again, March 6th, handicap chase. Get a day on the rail, Moscow, so what? One off the rail and on the stand side is Dubai Devils. These three abreast, three in front of Shea Malerk. And then Envol Piergi in the trigger, followed by Manila for dollars and then Arctic Skipper. Young Dev is continuing on on the outside of Samurai Cracker and Fog and Ballock has been pulled up. Nine fences left to jump as they head on inside halfway. Moscow, so what? Get a day, Dubai Devils, the three in a line, followed by the trigger. Next is Envol Piergi, and then Shea Malayok, Samurai Cracker, Manila for Dollars, and Arctic Skipper, who had a big payday here many moons ago in the Fortria. As they race past the 10 furlong point, eight fences left to jump. Moscow, so what? Dubai Devils and get a day. Two and a half in front of the trigger. On Vol Piergi, Shea Malayok, Manila for Dollar, Samurai Cracker, Arctic Skipper, Young Dev. As they jump the fence across from the stands, nine furlongs to go. Seven left. Dubai Devils on the outside of Moscow, so what? On the inner is get a day. Length and a half back to the trigger, and then on Vol Piergi, followed by Shea Malayok and Manila for Dollars, Samurai Cracker, Young Dev, and Arctic Skipper. Racing to the next fence on the far side, get a day over in front of Moscow, so what? Dubai Devils tracked by the trigger, Manila for Dollars, on Vol Piergi, Shea Malayok next, and then Samurai Cracker, Arctic Skipper, and Young Dev. Six and a half furlongs to go. They have five fences left to jump. 
And it is get a day, Moscow so what, Dubai Devils still the top three, and followed by the trigger, and then on Vol Piergi, and Shea Maleuk, jumped that one well on the outside, gets into contention with less than three quarters of a mile to go. Four fences to jump, and it's still the same three up front. Dubai Devils, Moscow, so what, get a day. Closing is Shea Maleuk. Under pressure is on Vol Piergi. As they come to the last ditch, four from the finish. Moscow, so what? In between Dubai Devils and Get a Day as they rise. And then Shea Maleuk and the trigger next with Envol Piergi. And then Samurai Cracker and Young Dev. As they turn into the straight, struggling both Manila for dollars and Arctic Skipper. Homeward bound, four furlongs to go and three fences left. And it's Dubai Devils with a fractional half a length advantage over Moscow. So what? Get a day, Shea Maleuk trying to respond to Grey Envol Piergi. Coming to the third last fence, the top of the track, and it's Dubai Devils, the leader from Shea Maleuk on the outside, who's continuing to make headway. On the far side is Get a Day. These three are followed by Moscow So What and Young Dev. Despite Hugh Morgan without his irons, is staying on on the outside, and then Samurai Cracker coming down towards the second last, and Shea Maleuk has come to pick it up from Dubai Devils and Young Dev. This will be a miracle if he wins. On the far side is Get a Day, and Get a Day is a crunching faller as they come down down to the final fence quickly up is the rider Darrow Keefe and it's Shea Maleuk from Dubai Devils and in between them is Young Dev as they come to the final fence in this three mile handicap and the grey Young Dev over on the far side has come to pick it up from Shea Maleuk in third place is Dubai Devils and up the hill towards the finish it is Young Dev on the far side and Hugh Morgan for a remarkable win this is extraordinary Young Dev from Shea Maleuk who's fought back to be beaten three parts of a length in third was Dubai Devils and then Samurai Cracker. Extraordinary is the word. Ten out, something else, really. ten out of... 110 out of 10 <laughs> to you, Morgan. Uh, How many would have even kept going after what happened so early in the round? No, I don't know, Gary, none, nobody. I, I think his right stirrup is gone. We, can't see, we couldn't see it flapping as he went through the race. His boot is open, that's only from friction but yeah the stirrup is gone looked right under the stick you see where the where the leather should be going into the saddle it's gone um, and he's ridden them for one two miles six and a half furlongs that is horsemanship at its absolute best uh, take a bow and he's getting a great reception justifiably I mean we saw him early on in the race Ruby he jumped a few fences and God only knows how uncomfortable that was then we saw him having a chat with Dunham Myler. The two of them were at the back of the field. Dunham Myler ended up pulling up with a circuit to go, and he had his irons. But it's uh, like you're, Gary, the fitness to do what he's just done, the amount of power, grip, and fitness that he's had to have to keep going, keep his balance. And watch him, doesn't move, his body stays perfectly straight on every fence. He doesn't even look like he's going to come off at any stage. Jumps the last, and he gets stuck into young Dev then, and he keeps going. But that is, that was brilliant to watch. That is what riding, that's right, that's riding. Simple as Unreal it's real, it was. It's proper. And the first couple of fences you could see after it happened, he was just worried about getting over them. Then, after a while, he saw you could clearly tell watching, he started to get a bit more comfortable and he was actually firing him into fences and getting some great yeah, jumps out of it. He was something. with a grip, and look, yeah, everybody is, or you should be taught when you're younger to ride bareback basically, so that's what you're doing. Um, but we can all do it can't turn around I don't know how many people could do it in a, in a chase for this distance but it's I think a testament to Hugh, Hugh Morgan's his fitness uh, his determination and that's a will to win just would not take no for an answer Henry de Bromhead actually his boss was watching the race not too far away from us here and he was just saying he's <laughs> doing a bit of show jumping and what have you of late and that obviously would have stood him in good stead in a situation like this too, wouldn't it? Uh, it would, but it's it, the grip, the power he has in his thighs, he, his legs are wrapped around this horse, and it's brilliant to watch. Yeah, it's really something out of the ordinary here at Navin this afternoon. Full credit to the young man. And Dennis Hogan and the owners of the horse will be absolutely thrilled. Hopefully there'll be no issues here when he goes to weigh in either. No, it does look like that letter and I... Well, we've just had a really extraordinary race for the three-mile handicap chase here at Navin. That's the only way you can describe it, I think. It was won by Young Dev under Hugh Morgan, who's with us now. Hugh, 
firstly, congratulations. People are already calling this the ride of the season, ride of the year. How in the name of God did you pull that off? I don't know what I going to say. Well, just after the first there, uh, my right iron, uh, I felt to go. And then I, I just looked down to see if, I, if it was just out of the pin there to grab it. But it was gone at that stage. So um, I just said, uh, kick the other one out. And I said, we'll just kick on and just hack, hack away and see, see where, how we get on. You obviously had a decision to make at that stage. And we could see you almost thinking aloud. Were you tempted to pull up even at that early stage? Uh, just when I kicked the uh, irons out, I just thought, um, look, he's a, he's a handic well, ha well experienced handicapper and uh, he surely he'll know his way around. So I, I was happy, way, happy to hack away and like, we were taking our time either way. So um, it was sort of grand that way that we didn't have to be up, up there for, forcing or anything, just hack away and see how things happen there. Not long after you dropped to the back of the field and done a miler, who actually has ridden Young Dev plenty in the past, was alongside you. What were you chatting about? Because we saw you having a bit of a chin wag at that stage. Yeah, he just uh, he just briefly just asked, uh, are we still going to keep going like that? And I said, well, there's no other choice. So um, I said, we, like, we're, we're happy out. So we said, well, hack, hack away. And just, that, was, that was really it. There were a lot of people watching the race who were asking the same question. And just how uncomfortable was it for you? Just kind of take us through the scenario that that faced you? Uh, it wasn't too uncomfortable at the time, but it was just uh, just keep my, leg, my legs wrapped around them and uh, just keep, keep squeezing away. Just early on, just leave them warm up, um, which I, they've said to just leave them warm up and then he'll he'll uh, be better better than get his confidence away, and he, which exactly was that. Uh, he, when he warmed up, he was, well, you could even trying to give him a squeeze down to well, well That's there, it. I yeah. think we could see you growing in confidence faced with an unusual situation as well down the back because you were actually asking him up at a few of those fences and he was responding, wasn't Exactly, it? yeah, he was. And like he seemed to enjoy it. So um, and it sort of worked out well. Um, just at Gus going to the fourth last, I thought they got away a little bit. Just going up the hill, I, I said I'd give him a chance then. I just gave him a flick then. And uh, he, I, I was happy enough that I had him covered because I didn't, I didn't want to get to the front too soon because he just, he can idle a little bit in front. Yeah, and everyone was wheeling you home. What point did you think it was actually going to happen though? Was it just going to two out? You probably sensed that you had a real chance, did you? Yeah, going to, going to two out, I still thought I had, uh, had own, own covered and it was just, just trying to just get there as late as possible, um, which we did going to the last. And just even after the last, he just had a little idle, but it gave him a flick or two. I tried to, and, uh, and he, he responded the way, which was brilliant now. And what was the sense of achievement for you, like, crossing the line? Not just, I mean, getting around in that situation would have been a hell of an achievement, but to win under those circumstances, how were you feeling after all that? Well, just delighted anyway, just to get, get a winner in, anyway. and especially it was my, my first ride for Dennis, who and all, so um, it was very important, so it was great that uh, great that we won. It mightn't have looked pretty, but we, we still got, got past the line in front, so it was brilliant. And Q, as we all know, there's no crowds on race courses at the moment. Anybody who's here is basically here in a working capacity. And you got a huge cheer when you came back in there. How much did that mean to you? It went, went a lot now. It was, like, it was just great to get, great to get the horse to win. And uh, just the circ circumstances that happened there was uh, a little bit unusual, like, I suppose. Absolutely terrific. It's really lit up the day. And Hugh, not everybody will be familiar with you. Just tell us a little bit more about yourself. You're based with Henry de Bromhead, I think. Do you go into a few other yards as well? Yeah, I'm based uh, full time with, with, uh, with Henry. I try to go into uh, Joseph on a Friday, and I worked there with one of the, one in Henry's one day every uh, three weekends. So those two weekends that I off, I go up to uh, Joseph too as well, and I work a bit with uh, Paul Power, help him, and uh, John Flavin, and basically wherever I uh, can fit in time there. Good man. And I tell you what, you've really put yourself on the map today for anybody who wasn't familiar with you. You've got one ride to come later on and you'll probably be glad that you've got a bit of time in between, will you? Ah, yeah, I say just a warning, but um, hopefully we'll have irons, irons to get around there. So. <laughs> well, I tell you, that was a terrific job. It's absolutely been phenomenal, just the reaction we've had to it already here. It was brilliant to watch and well done you once again. Brilliant. Super Thanks stuff. very much.